Chapter 1, Section 2, Unifying Themes of Biology Key Concept Unifying themes connect concepts from many fields of biology. Main Ideas All organisms share certain characteristics. All levels of life have systems of related parts. Structure and function are related in biology. Organisms must maintain homeostasis to survive in diverse environments. Evolution explains the unity and diversity of life. First main idea. All organisms share certain characteristics. An organism is any individual living thing. All organisms on Earth share certain characteristics, but an actual definition of life is not simple. Why? The categories of living and non-living are constructed by humans and they are not perfect. For example, viruses fall into a middle range between living and non-living. They show some, but not all, of the characteristics of living things. All organisms are made up of one or more cells. A cell is the basic unit of life. In fact, microscopic, single-celled organisms are the most common forms of life on Earth. A single-celled, or unicellular, organism carries out all the functions of life just as you do. Larger organisms that you see every day are made of many cells and are called multicellular organisms. Different types of cells in a multicellular organism have specialized functions, like the ones shown on the figure on the screen here. Your muscle cells contract and relax. Your stomach cells secrete digestive juices, and your brain cells interpret sensory information. Together, specialized cells make you a complete organism. All organisms need a source of energy to carry out life processes. Energy is the ability to cause a change or to do work. All living things, from bacteria to ferrets to ferns, use chemical energy. Some organisms use chemicals from their environments to make their own source of chemical energy. Some organisms, such as plants, algae, and some bacteria, absorb energy from sunlight and store some of it in chemicals that can be used later as a source of energy. Animals obtain energy by eating other organisms. In all organisms, energy is important for metabolism, or all of the chemical processes that build up or break down materials. All organisms must react to their environment to survive. Light, temperature, and touch are just a few of the physical factors called stimuli to which organisms must respond. Think about how you respond to light when you leave a dimly lit room and go into bright sunlight. One of your body's responses is to contract the pupils of your eyes. Your behavior might also change. You might put on some sunglasses or raise your hand to shade your eyes. Other organisms also respond to changes in light. For example, plants grow toward light. Some fungi need light to form the structures that you know as mushrooms. Members of a species must have the ability to produce new individuals, or reproduce. When organisms reproduce, they pass their genetic material to their offspring. In all organisms, the genetic material that contains the information that determines inherited characteristics is a molecule called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. Single-celled organisms can reproduce when one cell divides into two cells. Both new cells have genetic information that is identical to the original cell. Many multicellular organisms, such as the gold specks jawfish, as is shown on the screen here, reproduce by combining the genetic information from two parents. In both cases, the instructions for growth and develop organisms from bacteria to people are carried by the same chemicals, DNA and ribonucleic acid, RNA. The process of development allows organisms to mature and gain the ability to reproduce. 
Second main idea. All levels of life have systems of related parts. Think about the separate parts of a car. Tires, engine, seats, and so on. Even if you have a complete set of car parts, you might not have a functioning car. Only when all of the parts that make up a car are put together in the correct way do you have a working car. A car is a system. A system is an organized group of related parts that interact to form a whole. Like any other system, a car's characteristics come from the arrangement and interaction of its parts. Systems exist on all scales in biology, from molecules that cannot be seen, to cells that can be seen only with a microscope, biosphere. In just one heart muscle cell, for example, chemicals and processes interact in a precise way so that the cell has energy to do its work. Moving up a level, heart muscle, valves, arteries, and veins form a system in your body, the circulatory system. Two organisms that interact can also be a system, as you can see in the figure on the screen here. On a larger scale, you are part of a biological system, an ecosystem, that has living and non-living parts. An ecosystem is a community of organisms and their physical environment. When you hear the term ecosystem, you might think about a large region, such as a desert, a coral reef, or a forest. But an ecosystem can also be very small in area, such as an individual tree. Often, different biologists study different systems. A person might focus on very specific chemical interactions that take place in a cell. A person studying behavior in birds might focus on predator-prey relationships in an, in an ecosystem. However, more and more biologists are working across different system levels. For example, some scientists study how chemicals in the brain affect social interactions. Third main idea. Structure and function are related in biology. Think about a car again. In a car, different parts have different structures. The structure of a car part gives the part a specific function. For example, a tire's function is directly related to its structure. No other part of a car can perform that function. Structure and function are also related in living things. What something does in an organism is directly related to its shape or form. For example, when you eat, you probably bite into your food with your sharp front teeth. Then, you probably chew it mostly with your grinding molars. All of your teeth help you eat, but different types of teeth have different functions. Structure and function are related at the level of chemicals in cells. For example, membrane channels and enzymes are both proteins, but they have very different structures and functions. A channel is a protein molecule that extends through the membrane or outer layer of a cell. It has a structure like a tube that allows specific chemicals to pass into and out of a cell. Enzymes are protein molecules that make chemical processes possible in living things. These proteins have shapes that allow them to attach only to certain chemicals and then cause the chemicals to react with each other. Different types of cells also have different functions that depend on their specialized structures. For example, cells in your brain process information. They have many Many branches receive information from other cells. They also have long extensions that allow them to send messages to other cells. Red blood cells are very different. They are much smaller, disc-shaped, and are specialized to carry oxygen. Their structure allows them to fit through even the smallest blood vessels to deliver oxygen throughout your body. Of course, a brain cell cannot take the place of a red blood cell. Structure and function are also related on the level of the organism. For example, your foot structure allows you to walk easily on rough, fairly even surfaces. Walking on a surface such as ice is more difficult, and walking up a wall is impossible for you. 
The beetle, shown on the screen here, is different. Its tarsi, or feet, have sharp prongs that can grip smooth or vertical surfaces, as well as soft pads for walking on rough surfaces. The beetle's tarsus has a different structure and function than your foot has, but both are specialized for walking. Fourth main idea. Organisms must maintain homeostasis to survive in diverse environments. Temperature and other environmental conditions are always changing, but the conditions inside organisms usually stay quite stable. How does the polar bear, uh, referenced on the screen here, stay alive in the Arctic? How can people be outside when the temperature is below freezing, but still have a stable body temperature around 37 degrees Celsius, which is about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit? Why do you shiver when you are cold, sweat when you are hot, and feel thirsty when you need water? Homeostasis is the maintenance of constant internal conditions in an organism. Homeostasis is important because cells function best within a limited range of conditions. Temperature, blood sugar, acidity, and other conditions must be controlled. Breakdowns in homeostasis are often life-threatening. Homeostasis is usually maintained through the process called negative feedback. In negative feedback, a change in a system causes a response that tends to return that system to its original state. For example, Think about how a car's cruise control keeps a car moving at a constant, set speed. A cruise control system has sensors that monitor the car's speed and then send that information to a computer. If the car begins to go faster than the set speed, the computer tells the car to slow down. If the car slows below the set speed, the computer tells the car to speed up. Similarly, if your body temperature drops below normal, systems in your body act to return your temperature to normal. Your muscles cause you to shiver, and blood vessels near your skin uh, contract. If your, sorry, if your body temperature rises above normal, different responses cool your body. Behavior is also involved in homeostasis. For example, animals regulate their temperature through behavior. If you feel cold, you may put on a jacket. Reptiles sit on a warm rock in sunlight if they get too cold, and then they move into the shade if they get too warm. Fifth main idea. Evolution explains the unity and diversity of life. Evolution changed in living things over time. Specifically, evolution is a change in the genetic of a subgroup or population of a species. The concept of evolution links observations from all levels of biology, from cells to the biosphere. A wide range of scientific evidence, including the fossil record and genetic comparisons of species, shows that evolution is continuing today. One way evolution occurs is through natural selection of adaptations. In natural selection, a genetic or inherited trait helps some individuals of a species survive and reproduce more successfully than other individuals in a particular environment. An inherited trait that gives an advantage to individual organisms and is passed down onto future generations is called an adaptation. Over time, the makeup of a population changes because more individuals have the adaptation. Two different populations of the same species might have different adaptations in different environments. The two populations may continue to evolve to the point at which they are two different species. Consider the orchid and the thorn bug in the figure shown on the screen here. Both organisms have adapted in ways that make them resemble other organisms. The orchid that looks like an insect lures other insects to it. The insects that are attracted to the orchid can pollinate the flower, helping the, or uh, the orchid to reproduce. The thorn bug's appearance is an adaptation that makes predators less likely to see and eat it. This adaptation allows the thorn bug to survive and reproduce. 
In different environments, however, you would find other orchid and insect species that have different adaptations. Adaptation in evolution is different from the common meaning of adaptation. For example, if you say that you are adapting to a new classroom or to a new town, you are not talking about evolution. Instead, you are talking about consciously getting used to something new. Evolutionary adaptations are changes in a species that occur over many generations due to environmental pressures, not through choices made by the individual organisms. Evolution is simply a long-term response to the environment. The process does not necessarily lead to more complex organisms, and it does not have any special endpoint. Evolution continues today, and it will continue as long as life exists on Earth. Evolution is a unifying of biology because it accounts for both the diversity and the similarities, or the unity, of life. As you study biology, you will see time after time that organisms are related to one another. When you read about cells and genetics, you will see that all organisms have similar cell structures and chemical processes. These shared characteristics result from a common evolutionary descent. Humans and bacteria have much more in common than you think. Both human and bacterial genetics are based on the same molecules, DNA and RNA. Both human and bacterial cells rely on the same sources of energy and they have similar cell structures. Both human and bacterial cells have membranes made mostly of fats that protect the inside of the cell from the environment outside of the cell. Now think about the vast number of different types of organisms. All of the species alive now are the result of billions of years of evolution and adaptation to the environment. How? Natural selection of genetic traits can lead to the evolution of a new species. In the end, this genetic diversity is responsible for the diversity of life on Earth. Chapter 1, Section 2, Unifying Themes of Biology Key Concept Unifying themes connect concepts from many fields of biology. Main Ideas all organisms share certain characteristics. All levels of life have systems of related parts. Structure and function are related in biology. Organisms must maintain homeostasis to survive in diverse environments. Evolution explains the unity and diversity of life. 